Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about a very special pulsar. A pulsar we discovered back in 2006 that kind of made no sense at first. Let's discuss what this is all about and welcome to What The Math. So this is actually not the pulsar we're going to be taking a look at, but it is in a similar region. Let's actually go back to Earth for a second and I'm going to start our, our adventure from here. We're going to discuss an object known as PSR J1748-2446 AD. It's actually pretty far away from us. It's in the, um, a globular cluster known as uh, Terzin 5. Let me just look this up first, and it's this one right here at a distance of about 33,000 um, light years away from us. So it is pretty far. We're going to fly to that object, fly to that global cluster first, and then I'm going to tell you a little bit more about why this particular poster is actually very interesting. If you don't know anything about pulsars or neutron stars in general, you may want to check out some of my other videos where I actually talk about them in a little bit more detail. And so here's that globular cluster we're going to. Uh, this is basically a collection of stars, millions of stars, that most likely were just created or are, are basically very, very young in nature. And so right there in the middle is where we're actually going to be going. This object is a pulsar discovered by the scientist um, from the University of McGill in Montreal, Canada. And uh, it's, a, it's a pulsar that has a record for being the fastest spinning neutron star we've discovered so far. In other words, it's actually spinning so fast that um, we didn't really believe it even existed at first because it seemed to have been um, spinning a lot faster than we thought pulsars can even spin. In other words, we expected the pulsars to fall apart if they were spinning that fast. Now I'm going to show you um, this in an accelerated time because there's actually another object in this system. And this is because it's actually a binary system. There is another object in orbit, and these are basically uh, um, two stars orbiting one another. And the other object here is um, a much, much smaller red dwarf with about 14 masses of our sun. And one of the reasons this pulsar is spinning so fast is because uh, back several million or maybe even a billion years ago, this was a much, much bigger star. And this star actually got pretty much absorbed and eaten away by the pulsar. And by eating away its mass, it was able to accelerate and create a lot more spin than it used to have before. All right, so let's actually go and take a look at it. So we're going to zoom into it. And we're going to take a look at its surface and its features. As you can see, this actually doesn't have any um, accretion disk, but in reality, it might have a very, very large accretion disk and very, very powerful jets coming out of its surface, specifically from two poles here. And this is how we detected it, of course. Now, before I actually go on the surface, let me show you the NASA representation of a pulsar. So right here, you can kind of see how NASA Godard describes pulsars. It shows you a very, very sort of a fast picture of how they actually move in real life. They do spin this fast or even faster. And uh, it also shows you the actual contents on the inside. So there's a bit of atmosphere here, very, very thin, usually millimeters thick. Um, there is the outer crust containing ions and electrons. There is the inner crust with ions and um, superfluid neutrons and superconductive protons on the inside. And we don't really know what's inside of it. As a matter of fact, in one of the previous videos, I refer to these not as stars, but as planetary objects, because they do seem to actually have very similar composition to planets, not stars. But anyway, we'll talk more about this in some of the future videos, because I really wanted to get to the point of this video, which is what happens if you were to stand on the surface of this pulsar? And this is where things get really, really unusual. So by standing on the surface here, you're going to be actually spinning at the speed of about 70,000 kilometers per second, or basically, you know, about fourth of the speed of light. Now, this is actually in decelerated time. I had to decrease time here because otherwise it would be spinning way too fast. You'd probably get super dizzy. Um, but if you were to stand on the equator of this object, 
you would be spinning at 70,000 kilometers per second. That is, that is very, very fast. That means that this particular pulsar emits pulses about 716 times per second. So one single rotation of this pulsar is about one divided by 716 seconds. And this is what makes this the fastest spinning pulsar, but also the most unusual one of them all. Because technically speaking, because it's spinning so fast, if you were to somehow magically land on, onto the surface of this neutron star, and if you were to actually stand on the equator, in other words, if I were to somehow figure out the way for me to stand right here on the equator, you would actually experience something very, very incredible. Something that I think might be the realm of science fiction, but really it's the realm of science. And let me just go back a few steps and explain to you how things work. So, right, we know that the speed of rotation here is 70,000 kilometers per second. We know that the radius of this object is about 16 kilometers. Maybe a little bit more on the equator, but not, not a lot more than 16. So now we can actually go to this on the one calculator that allows us to calculate the centrifugal forces and specifically the forces of objects that rotate, that spin. So if I were to enter the radius here, and this is in uh, kilometers, which are right here, and we're going to put 16. And linear speed, speed is in uh, kilometers per second, and in the linear speed here is about 70,000 kilometers per second. If I were to press the, uh, the calculate button, it would give me the centrifugal acceleration in Gs, and um, I can also calculate the other stuff, but I don't really need anything else, because this is what we're going to be looking at. Let's actually take a look at um, centrifugal uh, acceleration in meters per second squared. It's about 3.1 times 10 to the power of 11. All right, well, that, that's pretty interesting. So that's the acceleration outwards. Basically, that's you being, being pulled out from the center of the um, pulsar as it spins around if you were to stand on the surface. So every single molecule, every single atom, assuming they exist in that format, on the surface here are being pulled out with this amount of acceleration. Now, here's where you can actually guess where I'm going with this. And specifically, it's the actual, uh, basically, average gravity of a typical neutron star. So when you take a look at any neutron star, uh, in general, the gravitational attraction is a little bit similar. And it's usually um, around 2 times 10 to the power of 11 times that of Earth. In this specific case, according to Space Engine, the gravitational attraction here is about 2.8 times 10 to the power of 11. Compared to what we just calculated, that's about maybe seven times uh, bigger. So in other words, if I were to take um, this number, or I guess if I were to take the space engine number from here, which is the gravity itself on, this, um, on the surface, assuming you're not moving, and then divide that by the outer acceleration, you would actually find the gravity or the attraction, the gravitational attraction that you're experiencing by standing on the equator while being spun around by the pulsar. So, in other words, if I were to divide them, we would get a number that's about 9.2-ish, or maybe even less than that. And this suggests that the amount of acceleration that you're experiencing by standing on the surface is only about 9 meters per second square. That's actually, that's actually what we have on Earth. It might be even a little bit less than that. Now, it does increase dramatically as soon as you start moving away from the equator. As a matter of fact, if you were to stand right here, you would already be squished into, like, miniature pancake, and by, by getting here, you would already be just atoms. But by standing right in the middle on the equator, on this line right here, you would actually experience a relatively comfortable acceleration where a human being could kind of sort of survive. That's assuming, of course this human being would not be scorched completely by the incredibly strong radiation coming off the surface of this object. But this doesn't actually stop us from imagining that maybe, just maybe, there could be other beings that could actually potentially survive on the surface of a neutron star, and even more so, evolve and become some sort of a super intelligent life. And that's actually what... Uh, 
the book known as uh, Dragon's Egg by Robert uh, Forward is all about. It basically talks about a kind of a hypothetical scenario where life evolved um, on top of a neutron star and humans get to establish contact with them. But nevertheless, this doesn't change the idea that it's actually kind of unusual, kind of interesting, and kind of ridiculously super cool, I guess, that if you were to stand on the surface of this neutron star right here in the middle, just kind of like making sure that your hands don't go too far away from the equator, you would feel probably no different from being on Earth, with the exception of heat. But that's, that's something that you'll probably have to worry about in some other way. So there you have it. This unusual star, this unusual pulsar, this unusual neutron star is spinning so fast that the surface of this neutron star on the equator is creating the conditions that are kind of similar to the conditions on the planet Earth. To me, this is kind of mind blowing. I don't know about you guys, but it's definitely something that you don't really think about every single day. What actually happens on the surface of this pulsar is yet another story, and we probably maybe never will find out because it's just a little bit too far away from us. If the light takes 30,000 uh, years to reach this location, I don't think either one of us is going to learn what's on the surface anytime soon. But maybe our kids will, or their kids, or the kids of those kids. Anyway, that's really all I wanted to say in this video, and hopefully you enjoyed this video, and hopefully you learned something from it, and you'll subscribe if you still haven't. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and we'll talk about some other object you may have never heard of before. So this was the story of PSR J1748 slash 2446 AD. And this neutron star is located inside of this globular cluster known as Torsen 5. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.